there are two types of data, discrete and continuous. It's best to think of discrete data as clumps of values. Imagine you've done a survey of what type of chocolate your friends like. You might have a data table like this, and make a graph like this, with bunches of numbers representing the amount of people who like each type of chocolate. If the amount of people increased linearly with each type of chocolate, you might feel tempted to draw a line through them. But don't fall for that. The line wouldn't mean anything. You can see how this is not continuous. There is no smooth spectrum of chocolate types. But continuous data is different. It's a measure of how something changes, usually over time. Think of a graph of how fast you are walking, or a graph showing how the temperature changes throughout the day. Instead of being in clumps, there's a value available at every point along the graph. Imagine you go for a casual walk in a straight line, and every 20 seconds you measure how far you are from your house. You might have a table of data like this. These are specific measurements, and on a graph of distance over time, you would have the measurements marked out like this. If you walked at the same speed, then you'd always be covering the same amount of distance over the same amount of time. Our points would line up, and it would be totally okay to draw a line through them. This is a linear graph, representing linear data that changes the same amount the whole time. We can come up with an equation for the graph. It's easy. The equation for a line is y equals mx plus c. m is the gradient or slope of the line. That number is a ratio that shows how steep the line is. c is called a constant. It's a number that never changes, hence constant. We'll see what it means later. For a straight line, the gradient is the same everywhere on it. At any point on any line or curve, the gradient is just the y value of that point over the x value. You can remember it as rise over run. If we took just the first row from our data table, we could calculate the gradient of the line. Our first measurement is 40 meters at 20 seconds. So 40 is our y value at this point, and 20 is the x value. The gradient is y over x, rise over run. So it will be 40 over 20. We can leave it like this, but in maths, it's best to simplify things when you can. 40 divided by 20 equals 2. The 2 doesn't change anything. It has the exact same value as 40 over 20. That's why they're equal. Great, so now we can write y equals 2x plus c. Now for that constant c. The c is just our y-intercept, which is where the line crosses the y-axis. The y-axis is located at x equals 0. So if we plug x equals 0 into the equation, we just get y equals c. We can do the same thing to find the x-intercept. If we set y to equal 0, then solve for x, we see that x equals c divided by 2. So how can we tell c from our walking data? Well, c would be our starting point, how far away we are at 0 seconds. Let's say the point we measured the distance from was our house, and we started walking from the house. Then we started at 0 meters, and c just equals 0. But what if we started walking from 20 meters down the road? Well, then c would equal 20. Every point in time on the graph would have to include an extra 20 meters of distance. The line would just be moved upwards, and the y-intercept would become 20. Not too tricky, huh? Remember, discrete data comes in bulky groups, with no values between groups. Continuous data can be measured at specific points, but values can be found between those points. The equation for a line is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the constant or y-intercept.